This is the Takumi Sen 10, and this year there are actually some changes worth discussing. But don't worry, it's still very much a Takumi. Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who views running shoes here on YouTube. And today, I wanna to talk to you guys about the Adidas Takumi Sen 10. Before I do, I do wanna go over some disclosures. Adidas sent me these shoes for the purpose of a review so I didn't have to pay for them. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So, with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Adidas Takumi Sen 10. And first, let's go over some specs. It's still a 33 millimeter stack height shoe with a six millimeter drop giving us 27 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot and there's still light strike pro at least nominally in this shoe uh, but there are some changes to the midsole foam adidas tells me that they've tweaked the formula of the light strike pro so that way it is a little bit more responsive and to me that reads as it's going to be a little bit more firm but it hopefully will give you a little bit more as you're pushing into it it'll snap back even more aggressively at least that's what I hear when people tell me that things are more responsive. And there is also an updated rigid element inside the shoe in between kind of two sandwich layers of Light Strike Pro. There are still the energy rods, but they're a little bit different than the way they've looked like in the past in the Takumi Sen. This year it has more of the design that is similar to what we saw in the Adios Pro Evo 1, that concept shoe that Adidas released late last year. And so instead of like metatarsal rods that kind of follow the bones of your foot. Instead, we have what I've been calling a fish spatula. We still have continental rubber and it looks pretty similar to last year's outsole, but it is a little bit tweaked. There is more continental rubber in terms of this yellow section here up in the forefoot. And also while we're looking at the bottom of the shoe, something that we can notice is that this kind of sidewall that's on the lateral edge of the shoe seems to be pushed over a little bit more, making for what looks like a bigger cutout underneath the arch of the shoe. Moving to the upper, we have what seems to be a very similar looking upper, at least compared to what we had in the Takumi Sen 9, and by extension, the Takumi Sen 8. We still have the little flippy thing at the back, which Adidas officially calls the heel blinker, and the official position for the heel blinker is not in the up position. This is absolutely wrong. You're supposed to put it down. That's still here as well, and we still have little bumper pads in the back on each side of the ankle to give a little bit of cushion and also to make sure that that heel stays locked in. But where we do see a change is in the lacing system. While we still have the same number of lace holes here, it seems like the lacing system extends further down on towards the top of the foot. Uh, I could kind of get the sense looking at the shoe that something was a little bit different, but when I actually put the two shoes next together, it becomes more apparent. And what I think that does is provide a little bit more volume towards the front end of the toe box and also spaces out some of the lace loops that are here so that way you could better dial in the fit that's going on across the entire top of the foot. With all these changes, this year's Tukumi comes in a little bit heavier than it was last year, gaining 17 grams from 181 grams to 198 grams. Don't worry, it's still very light and under that 200 gram mark or just under seven ounces. Now that we've talked about all the paper specs, let's talk about what it was like to actually get this shoe out there on the roads. And don't worry, it's still very much Takumi. And for a lot of you, you might not even notice the differences between the Takumi 8, 9, and 10. The DNA of the shoe is certainly still there and it certainly feels very much like the Takumi that we've come to know and love over the past few years. The changes are very subtle, which is a good thing in my mind. We're still getting a really great amount of cushion from impact when your foot hits the ground, but because it is, relatively speaking, for a racing shoe, a low to the ground shoe, that you're still getting a lot of feedback from the road and a very pleasant snapback. Just like in the previous versions of the Takumi Sen 9 and 8, I'm not really getting a strong sense of springiness from the energy rod elements that are in the shoe. And I think that for the most part, what they're helping to do is stabilize the shoe so it doesn't get too squirrely. And overall, it's a great combination of 
cushion and snappiness for those faster efforts. I've used it for everything from half marathon pace uh, down to a little bit faster than my 5K effort. And I feel like that is the sweet spot for this shoe. And I think that depending on the kind of runner that you are, it will change the way that you might be using the shoe. If you are training for marathons, this is gonna be a really good workout workhorse for you. If you are a shorter distance road runner, this is gonna be your 10K, 5K racing shoe uh, and something that you could even take for some of your longer tempo sessions as well. So there's a lot of both racing and workout versatility in the shoe, regardless of what distance you're racing out there on the roads. It's something that pretty much I'm gonna be recommending for everyone to put in their arsenal because it's so useful at a variety of workout and race paces. And it's just a really a lot of fun to run in. Now, to compare it to last year's Takumi Sen 9, I think that for the most part, it's very similar, but running in the two shoes almost back to back. One thing that I will notice is that the shoe definitely does feel more responsive, but I do feel like that once I'm getting up to speed, that firmness translate into really nice cushion, but also a more prominent snapback of the phone. It's not a huge difference. We're not talking about a revolutionary change. This is a slight modification. I think a slight improvement on the shoe. For those of you who maybe thought that the last two Takumi Sens were a little bit soft when it comes to 5K racing or maybe even anything faster than that on the roads, this year's Takumi tightens up a little bit to make it just a little bit more aggressive. And then the other one thing that I will note that could be a problem for some of you, even if you've had success in the prior Takumis, is again, taking a look at the bottom of the shoe. I do feel like they've cut out more from underneath the arch here. And for those of you who are already pronating a lot and consider yourself over pronators and maybe had some difficulties with longer distance in the Takumi Sen 9, I feel like that's going to be exacerbated in the Takumi Sen. For me, once I'm running at paces that the Takumi is designed for, I don't notice it. I just feel like there is an extra bit of stiffness at the front of the foot that is pleasant for when I'm trying to push off and go fast. But in some of those easier paces, when I back off race paces a little bit, or if I'm doing some sort of warm up, cool down or recovery, I definitely feel that there's been a change underneath the arch of the foot. And so it's something that you might want to keep an eye out for if you were in that over pronator category. Now that we've talked about what the shoe is like to run in, let's talk about some pairing options if you want to include this and build a lineup around this shoe or including this shoe. Now I think for Adidas, they have a really deep catalog of shoes. So I think we could build an entire Adidas rotation if that's something you want to do. If you're using the Takumi Sen 10 or the Takumi Sen 9 as your 5K, 10K racer, or if you're a marathoner and you're using it for your speedier session types of shoes, I think a really nice daily trainer to pair it with is going to be the Supernova Rise. This is gonna be really chill for your easy days, something that you could log a bunch of miles in. And while the Takumi Sen 10 may be a little bit unstable underneath the arch of the foot, uh, the Supernova Rise tries to accommodate for that and prevent that. So on those days where you need a little bit more support, a little bit of extra protection, there is a stiffer layer of material underneath the more squishy Dream Strike foam that's in this shoe that helps keep it a little bit more stable. Plenty of padding in here, makes it nice and comfy. And then for your race day, I think there's like a dream pairing that I think that should go in it. And that would be the Adios Pro Evo 1. And I kind of say that jokingly because this isn't really a shoe that I'm recommending to people, but I will point out that in my mind, I feel like these two shoes are very close cousins. And that's why I picked this shoe recently to race a half marathon in uh, because I feel like a lot of the dynamics that I'm getting in terms of uh, the angle of attack, they remind me of one another. I feel like the Adios Pro Evo one is kind of like a super Takumi. And so like that would be a dream pairing of a, a race day shoe if you're not already racing in the Takumi Sen. But for most of you guys, the shoe that I'm actually going to recommend as your, your marathon racer is gonna be the Adios Pro 3 also gets the Light Strike Pro treatment. I'd say that this one changes the toe spring quite a bit and there's a lot more kind of front of the shoe emphasis that's happening with the Adios Pro 3. But if you're liking the Takumi Sen for your mile repeats, I'm gonna point you towards the Adios Pro 3 for those marathon race efforts. Now let's talk about the buying guide and some competitors that you might also want to consider. Techni and this is where things get weird. Technically, this shoe already released January 1st, 2024 
I don't think it's actually available in the United States yet. I've been trying to find people that have it and it's not really for sale, but whenever it does finally go on sale, the retail price is gonna be $180. And I think that has been the price of the Takumi for the last three years. And I think that's an amazing price, especially considering that every once in a while, Adidas will like slash the price by like 40% and you could pick them up really, really cheap. But let's go with $180 price point and talk about some of the competition. If you wanted something like the Takumi, but didn't want to get the Takumi. And I think the first thing that I have to look at is, again, still in the Adidas lineup, and that's the Adios 8. We're at a weird time in the year. Again, not only is the Takumi Sen 10 technically released, but not really available in the US, but the Adios 9 is around the corner, but in interim, if you need something now, I do think that the Adios 8 is a really nice option. It doesn't have the energy rod elements in this shoe, but it does have a nice portion of Light Strike Pro up in the forefoot. The upper has very much of a race day feel, so this is a much cheaper option than the Takumi if you're looking at both and you can only find full price options. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, and you want something that's even lower to the ground and doesn't have that energy rod element to it and is a little bit more stable because there are some stabilizing elements to this shoe, then the Adios 8 is gonna be something I'd have you take a look at. That shoe retails at $130 right now, so you'd be saving quite a bit if you're looking at a full price Takumi. And then the other shoe, which I think is a little bit of a stretch, but one that I think is in the same conversation as a Takumi Sen that you could look at that's outside the Adidas family would be from Saucony, and that is the Saucony Sinister. Now this is a shoe that I have run in, I really enjoyed it, I haven't done a full review of it yet, but I do think that it's a very fascinating shoe because it is nothing but Power Run PB, one of Saucony's really good super foams, but there's no plate, there's no stabilizing element, and it's very low to the ground, at least in 2023 and 2024 standards. Really nice and flexible shoe, so if you have good enough mechanics to run in the Takumi Sen 10 well, you could probably run in the Saucony Sinister really well. The upper is super lightweight, and the entire package is just absolutely featherweight, uh, so something that you should be considering as well. And that shoe comes in also at a discount compared to the Takumi, comes in at $150. But I think the closest and most difficult competition that the Takumi Sen 10 is going to face is the Takumi Sen 9. There are differences this year depending on what you need. If you need the Takumi to be just a little bit more aggressive and faster, the Takumi Sen 10 is definitely better. But I feel like they're still very close. And for a lot of the people watching this channel, those road marathoners out there, the Takumi Sen 9 might be the preferable option, especially since it's now last gen technology and hopefully will be able to be found at a bit of a discount. Although right now I'm having a hard time finding either the Takumi Sen 10 or the Takumi Sen 9, unless you happen to be like a size 11 and a half. So for those of you who are that size, Congratulations, go pick up some of the leftover Takumi Sen 9s. Hopefully, uh, as time passes, we'll start to see more inventory being released. So those are my thoughts on the Takumi Sen 10. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. Or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday over on the Kofu Zoo Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys over there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully, you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?